Hello there, welcome to another drive-by code session. Um, so this is going to be episode two in the making a programming language series. Um, so last time we talked about the different programming language architectures there are. There's the compiled programming languages, which look like this. Um, interpreted programming languages, transpiled programming languages, and bytecode interpreted programming languages. I'm not going to rehash the details. If you would like to know about the details, um, please watch episode number one in this series. Um, this time, I'm go going to go more in depth into the program that you're making, whether you're making a compiler, you're making an interpreted programming language, or a transpiled language, uh, or a transpiled programming language, I should say. Um, now, uh, I'm actually going to do it uh, for this episode and the next. I'm going to do a kind of overview of the whole end-to-end -end process um, of building a programming language. Um, it'll be like a very, very basic bare bones programming language um, to sort of get the overview, the end to end big picture out of the way. And then after that, I will go into more detail um, for for each of the components. Um, um, so for now, we're going to in this episode, we're going to talk about the parser. So whether you're making a what whatever programming language architecture that you're gonna be using, you will end up building a parser, and your parser will want to emit a something called the AST, which stands for um, abstract syntax tree. Abstract syntax syntax tree. And what is an abstract syntax tree? I will show you that in a moment, but basically it is a true representation of what the code from the input is. Once you have the code in AST form, next step is to put it through another program that you're gonna write, and that program will be either a compiler, or an interpreter, or a transpiler, or what have you. Now, to give you an idea of what the what an AST is, and um, and like what the parser does, I'm going to use the example of JavaScript. Okay, so this is the S Prima JavaScript parser, it, which is available for free on NPM for you to download and play with. But if you just want to play with it, they have created, the author of S Prima has created this demo web page uh, where you can write any JavaScript you want on the left hand side and get an AST representation of the code on the right hand side. So this line of JavaScript here, well, let's ignore the comments because the comments are ignored anyway. Um, so this line of code is represented by this AST here. Um, and while this, this AST may seem kind of complicated, it is actually not if you dig into it in detail. It's just very verbose. So what is this saying? Well, first of all, this JavaScript object or JSON object is a representation of this line of code. So what is this line of code? Well, actually, this is a program, right? This is this code here. It actually could have had multiple lines in it, but this code here is a program. And a program has a body. Uh, which consists of a number of statements. This one only has one statement. So the body is represented as an array and in that 
there is one JavaScript object. So that object represents this statement here. And then what kind of statement is it? Well, it's a variable declaration statement. That makes sense. This is a variable declaration. And then inside a variable declaration statement, there are multiple declaration declarations. Why is that? Well, as you know, in JavaScript, you can have multiple variable declarations within one var keyword. Uh, in this one, though, there's only one. So there's only one declaration, or the, it, this is called a variable declarator in a variable declaration. There's only one declarator inside this variable declaration. And that declarator has an ID of answer. It, its ID is an identifier, and the name of the identifier is an answer. That's the name of the variable. And then init represents the initial value of this variable. And the initial value is the result of a binary expression, 6 times 7. And that is represented as something that has a type of a binary expression, an operator, a left-hand side, and a right-hand side. So this, this JavaScript object here, this sort of composite JavaScript object, um, is a representation of this line of code. And this is what an AST is. It is sort of a tree. It's a tree. It's called an abstract syntax tree. And uh, it, it is like a true representation in tree structure of code. Um, another way to visualize this is, um, so you have this line of code, same line of code. The leaves of the the code, or you can look at this code as a series of tokens. The token six is a literal. Uh, the multiplication, the the star is an operator, and then seven is another literal. Uh, we can group those three things into a binary expression, and then for the variable declaration, we can. It is also a grouping. It's a grouping between a var keyword and identifier and assignment up and an expression of some sort for the initial expression. This initial expression just happens to be a binary expression. So, um, so next we're gonna get into the programming language that uh, WhiteKit made. So I went to WhiteKit and I said, "Hey WhiteKit, I need to make." a very, very small programming language that I can demo in a short amount of time, end-to-end. Uh, -end. Um, I, I said to him, give me just enough to implement the Fibonacci sequence. So this language is called MyPL, and it can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And uh, it has variables, and it has a while loop and it can print results. And that's basically all that this programming language can do. And it is a transpiled programming language and it will transpile to JavaScript for simplicity's sake. And this code example here um, contains all of the features of this programming language. In the next episode, we will start actually coding this programming language. So I hope to see you next time.